Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work, and I hope you're having a great Monday afternoon. It's great when you have a victory like we had yesterday. Oh, my God, that just did my heart so so much good. So much goodness to have a flat-out blowout for the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, it's, it's great because, you know, um, I was sitting here looking at um, something interesting, and I forgot to pull it up here. Let me pull it up real quick. Something that was interesting um, from last week. The thing they always say about the NFL, that it's not for long, and boy, does that truly, truly hold true. Um, last week, we had the quarterback index, okay? Um you know, every week you've got ratings and rankings and stuff and all that. And, of course, NFL tiers, as um, they have on um, uh, um, Get Up. No, first things first. And and so on. But in the end, they really don't mean a whole lot because they're so subject to change. So I'm sitting here going through last week. This is how, how crazy it is. Um, I'm working in the workshop, and you've got Colin Cowherd talking about Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh my God, it's it's time to panic. Tom Brady and you know, uh, and, and the coach they're they're fighting, and Tom Brady couldn't get anything going, and he only talked for 56 seconds, and so on. Now, now this is where we were last week on the quarterback index. It's been a rough few weeks at the top of the quarterback index. Kyler Murray got hurt on the final play in Arizona of the Cardinals' first loss and missed a start. Prescott played worse against the Broncos than Cooper Rush did against the Vikings. Tom Brady uh, went into the bye week with a game ceiling turnover. Matthew Stafford gave a game away against the Titans. Derek Carr's turnover were decisive and a loss to the Giants. And even Lamar Jackson's last two games, a blowout loss to the Bengals and an overtime win to the Vikings, were even... Uh, were uneven for his lofty standards. So this is why I didn't push back too much against the MVP talk. Okay, all right. So going into this week, this rating by uh, Greg Rosenthal had Tom Brady, Tom Brady rated as the number one quarterback in the NFL. Hmm. On a week-to-week snap-to-snap basic, I give Brady a slight edge over uh, the first half of the season as the best quarterback in football. It's close to the top, but Brady's ability and consistency is better than the field. He spoke last year about solving some of the Bucks' offensive problems during the 2020 bye week, so I'm curious to see what the group looks like after a week off. Not real good against the Washington football team. Okay, Lamar Jackson is at number two. Lamar's performance against Minnesota was the season's wrist small. A few missed uh, misses during an ugly start, a barrage of deep and intermediate throws and coverage, better running instinct than any football, uh, any player in football, and comeback victory where he played the hero. They, of course, got beat Thursday night. Dak Prescott. That performance came out of nowhere, or perhaps it came from Prescott's calf injury, which interrupted the rhythm of the Cowboys' offense. Prescott moved well Sunday, but missed a lot of throws. The absence of left tackle Tyron Smith allowed pressure to Dak. Okay, we all know. So he still had last week Dak Prescott at number three. Then at four, they had Derek Carr. At number five, Matthew Stafford. Justin Hubert at six. Josh Allen at number seven. Joe Burrow. Who I believe leads the NFL in interceptions. I gotta get this mother humping thing um, out of the way. Interesting to say the least. Philly, what, why are you talking, Philly? What, where, where'd you come out of nowhere? I say that just because it's just crazy that now we had Tom Brady as number one, and now we've got Tom Brady needs to, you know, just go away. Now, on to what I really wanted to come and talk to you guys about here is about what Dan Quinn has actually done for the Dallas Cowboys. It is amazing that Dan Quinn um, has literally resurrected the Dallas Cowboys defense. And last night, fittingly, they gave him a game ball. Let me see if I got the right one here. Here we go. Let's play that for you guys. I want to present a game ball to Dan Quinn. Yeah.
Yeah, that that was incredible seeing that. Now, here's the thing. Now, you know, I'm a guy who loves numbers. I love statistics. And a couple of things, you know, I, I like to go through. You see, where my dooms, doomsday defense that is getting better as the season goes on. It's funny because in the beginning of the game, first drive, oh, the defense looks shaky. Oh, my God, we need Randy Gregory. Oh, it's looking so bad. It's like, just, just relax. You know, don't look at the first couple of drives in a game as how the game's going to go because, you know, sometimes it's jitters. You know, sometimes guys got to get that first hit. And, you know, you get the tone of the game. And a lot of times, team will jump out at you, you know, the first play. We exploded on the second quarter with, like, 29 points. And the last time I saw a quarter like that was many years ago on a Monday night that I took uh, my friend Jim, who has passed us, uh, to FedEx Field to see the Eagles versus Washington on a Monday night. That was the game that Albert Hainsworth, I believe, laid on his fat ass while Michael Vick literally ran around him in circles. Um I think they scored 28 points in that second quarter, too. I, I may be mistaken, but it, it was crazy because I thought that that game was going to kill Jim just being the first game that he'd ever gone to um, to see Washington. But earlier this year, over the, the off season, you know, I like to go through and I like to give you my theories and, and things. And people, of course, are like, yeah, okay, you think you know what you're talking about, but you don't know jack crap. Um, I like to... Play with numbers. I like to give you statistics and things and give you stuff that other people don't necessarily do. And look at trends of things that happened in the past. Because if you don't know what's happened in the past, you really don't know what's going on in the future. And that can be a window onto things. So let's take a look real quick at the Dallas Cowboys statistics here. Where we sit. Right now... On offense, the Dallas Cowboys, sitting pretty, number one offense in points and in yardage. Shout out to the Dallas Cowboys. That is freaking insane. I love that. But more importantly, I want you to look at the defense and where the defense is ranked. You see that points, um, the the points uh, uh, against scoring defense, they're 10th. Yardage, giving up yardage, they're 15th, middle of the pack. But takeaways, they're fourth. Now, it was my premise over the summer, and I went through and did the stats, and I'm going to go ahead and show you again, that the last eight Super Bowl champions, the last eight Super Bowl champions all had one thing in common on defense. And of these three categories, scoring defense, yards given up, and takeaways, that every one of them had at least two categories that were top 10 or better. You follow me? Now, are you looking at the Cowboys right now? 10th in points, which is getting better. It's getting better. Um, Takeaways, we're fourth. We're taking the ball away more than we have in, like, forever. In fact, I think we already have more takeaways now this year than we had last year. Actually, let's look at last year. We can go back. This is a great thing about pro football references. It's got everything. So you look at, we were seventh last year um, in takeaways uh, in the NFL. We're fourth. And you can see we were 28th in in points and 23rd in yards. Not a Super Bowl caliber defense. But let's take a look real quick at some of these other ones. So Tampa Bay last year, when they won the Super Bowl, their defense, eighth in points, sixth in yards, fifth in takeaways. Boom. Tom Brady gets all the credit, but I'm going to let you know that that number eight, that's the worst defense that Tom Brady has had and won the Super Bowl. He gets all the credit, but you got to look around and say, it's not the only ones. The Chiefs. Now, the Chiefs are always thought of as a team that, you know, the Chiefs, it's just Pat Mahomes, but believe it or not, their scoring defense was seventh. Their takeaways, tenth. Again, holds up with this theory. The year before, the Patriots, you see that? Seventh in points, 21st in yards, but fifth in takeaways. Again, two categories within the top ten. Let's go to the Eagles. Shout out to the Eagles that were really the power of four because they were fourth in points, fourth in yards, fourth in takeaways. Again, at least two of them in the top ten. Patriots, 
one and eight. Uh, Broncos, Broncos were killers. Four, one and eight. Three of them in there. Patriots again. Got sick of the Patriots. Eight, thirteen, and four. That's one of the few that don't have three. Oh, excuse me, two. Seattle Seahawks, one, one, one. And then finally, it's actually surprisingly, this one actually surprises me, that Baltimore wasn't um, with any. It's one of the few. And the final one, of course, in the last 11 years is looking at the New York Giants. The Giants only had takeaways in the top 10. So you can see the importance of the defense. Um at winning a Super Bowl or being a Super Bowl contender. And as much as we always think it's just the quarterback, like I said, Tom Brady has never had worse than the eighth scoring defense when they've won the Super Bowl. And for the Dallas Cowboys to be now literally um, two categories in the top ten, guys, that is one hellacious takeaway uh, turnover. Um, I mean, change. I mean, this is where you have to give Dan Quinn a game ball for the season. And I think the biggest difference is, I remember Jason Garrett. I hate to always keep referring back to Rico Gathers, but this is the perfect um, perfect you know, example of this. Rico Gathers was tall, basketball player, lengthy, kind of skinny. He could jump. He could actually run pretty good. He looked good running. And they said, yeah, we understand. Because I remember that, that that preseason game when we were in L.A. Coliseum, and he had three touchdown catches. And he looked and said, man, this guy, you know, he is a pass-catching tight end. The Cowboys said, yeah, that's cool and all that, but we want you to put on weight because we want you to block. And he did. He put on weight. He was okay at blocking, but once he put on the weight, he didn't carry it well. He couldn't run well. And after him just spending all his time blocking, he kind of lost the passing skills. And that's a case of a team that's saying, we need you to fit our peg hole. We got it. You're a square peg, but we, we're going to make you fit that round hole. And you lose what that person has that's good. The Cowboys with Dan Quinn is like, okay, I'm going to figure out what you do well, and I'm going to find a place to make it work on our team because I want to get the thing that you do the best and exploit that because then you're getting above average play than saying, yeah, you're a great rusher, but I need you to be more of a uh, you know read and react. I need you to be a read and react guy as opposed to get up field type guy. And this is where Dan Quinn has excelled with this defense of finding combinations and guys that will fit in over and over again and even being able to take hits um, from losing players due to injuries and things and just keep on rolling. And so this makes me happy, and I'm hoping that the Cowboys can keep this trend going on, that this defense will get better and better. And the reason I hope that it will and believe that it will is knowing that we are going to be getting healthier um, in a couple of weeks, that Demarcus Lawrence is close, that – um, Randy Gregory will be back in two more weeks. That uh, uh, Micah Parsons, excuse me, not Micah Parsons, uh, Navelle Gallimore will be back. And a guy like Tristan Hill just finally got his first uh, game under his belt that he'll improve and get better uh, as the season goes on. And this defense could end up being, for once, a strength of the Cowboys as opposed to the redheaded stepchild. And so with that being said, We are going to go ahead and get our behinds up on out of here. I hope you guys tune in tonight um, for our live stream. You know we'll be in here getting lively as always and uh, talking a little smack. And um, we'll also be watching the Rams because that game is actually key for us. So for now, I'm trying to find. Why can't I? Oh, here we go. Trying to find this one to roll on out of here for the poor giants they found a way to lose without even playing no question about it 13 20 
left, fourth and one. You want to kick the field goal. Oh, so what, we're still waiting 35. for the still waiting for the call. Oh, we go! With you. Oh, they missed. Oh man, they missed the field goal. Are you? We didn't get it. No, you got stopped. They missed the field goal. Oh my God, Jesus and we Christ. got stopped. Yeah, it's definitely time to eat.